Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial. In today's video, we are going to learn about Azure Load Balancer. Now this is a beginner level tutorial. We're going to go through some definitions and then I'm going to take you to Azure Portal and show you everything in action. Today I'm going to particularly talk about Azure Public Load Balancer. So what is Azure Load Balancer? Load balancing in general refers to effectively distributing incoming network traffic across multiple backend virtual machines or computers. Now in this diagram you will see that there's a load balancer in the middle and traffic, inbound traffic is coming over the public internet. It hits the Azure Load Balancer and then the load balancer distributes traffic equally to the backend virtual machines or the backend pool in this case. Now bear in mind that Azure Load Balancer operates at level 4 which is the transport layer. I've got a diagram here that explains the OSI model in case somebody needs a refresher but most of you should be familiar with the OSI layer. So Azure Load Balancer works at the transport layer level 4. So there are two kinds of load balancing in Azure. Public load balancer is a load balancer with a public IP address facing the internet. So any inbound connections coming through to your virtual machines or virtual machine scale sets can pass through the load balancer and the load balancer will do the traffic distribution depending on the settings that you set during the time of creating a load balancer. Your outbound connectivity will also go through the public IP address of the Azure Load Balancer when they do outbound connections. There are internal load balancers as well in Azure which you can create an internal load balancer to manage traffic within a private virtual network. Now Azure Load Balancer comes in three flavors, Basic, Standard and Gateway. I think Basic will get removed towards the end of this year, 2025. So Moving forward, you will be able to use standard and gateway. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to use the standard gateway. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be creating a, an Azure public load balancer, and I will show you how it works in real life. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see everything in action. Okay, so I have logged into our Azure test environment. As you can see, I've got two servers, two web servers. And if I show you one of the web servers, these two servers have been set up identically. Both the servers have got inbound HTTP and HTTPS enabled. And they do have public IP addresses assigned to them at the moment. But once the Azure Load Balancer, Azure Public Load Balancer is up and running effectively, we do not need the public IP addresses anymore. So we will be able to unassign them and remove them once we have the Azure Public Load Balancer up and running. To demonstrate this um, workflow, I have also created a sample website on both these servers with a IIS server role, so you will be able to see the load balancer working uh, in action. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to this search bar up in here and search for the load balancer. So as you type load balancer, you will see this option coming up. So click on the load balancer. I do not have any existing load balancer. So this is the very first time I'm creating one in this environment. So click create. I'm going to select my resource group. Now I'm going to give my load balancer a name. So I'm going to go Azure Public Load Balancer. This sounds good. And I'm going to go with the standard um, SKU for this tutorial. Type, I'm going to select public. This is going to be a public facing Azure load balancer. And tier, I'm going to leave it as regional. And we go next. Now, in the next stage, we're going to have to create a front-end IP configuration. This is the public front-end IP of your Azure Load Balancer. So I'm going to add a Load Balancer IP. Okay, I'm going to leave it at IP version 4. Uh, IP type, I'm going to leave it as IP address, 
public IP address. I don't have any existing public IP addresses that I can use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click create new to create a new public IP address. And I just copy this name. Let me call it config. Okay. And I do not want it to be zone redundant, but if you're doing this in your actual production environment, I highly recommend that you go with some sort of redundancy. Um, but this is a test environment, so I'm just going to select no zone in here. I'm going to click save. That looks good. Let's click save again. Let's go next. Now this is the backend pool, so I need to add at least one backend pool. Um, so this is going to be the virtual machines that are going to sit behind the Azure public load balancer. So I'm going to call it backend pool one. I'm going to select a virtual network where the resources are sitting. So this is the only virtual network I've got in my test environment. And I can go with IP address for the backend pool um, configuration if I like to do that. Otherwise, I can go with NIC. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to click Add. And it's showing my virtual machines that are within that test VNet. So I'm going to select both of these servers. Obviously, since it's a pool, you need to have a minimum of two. Um, so I'm going to select Add and Save. That's also done. Let's click Next. Now, these are the inbound rules that you need to create. So you're telling basically how the inbound connections should be handled by the Azure Public Load Balancer. So let me just um, add a load balancing rule. So I'm going to to uh, HTTP rule, which is what we're going to test. Now you can do HTTPS as well. In production environment, most likely that you will do HTTP as well as HTTPS, both um, protocols. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to do HTTP. Um, IP4 is the IP version. Let's select the front end IP address of the Azure load balancer. Let's select our back in pool protocol. It's going to be TCP. HTTP port is port 80. So I'm going to keep port 80 in there and add port 80 to the back end as well. So the back end uh, pool also going to communicate um, on port 80. Now, help probe this helps you uh, identify if there are any issues with your Azure load balancer and the back end pool connectivity. So during this process, we need to create a help probe as well. So let me just give it a name. And it's going to work on port 80 as well. Leave the default settings as it is. I'm just going to click Save. So during this process, it's going to create a help probe as well. Now, session persistent, that refers to a client, if a client connection should be handled by the same backend virtual machine. This is where you set that setting. So session persistence is off by default. But if you want to um, create a session persistent um, connectivity, then you can set this up. Um, by default, it's turned off, as I mentioned earlier. Only set this up if you environment needs that the client is serviced by the same backend virtual machine um, during a session. Otherwise, you don't need to enable session persistence. Um, ideal timeout is four minutes. I'm going to leave it as it is, but for your environment, this may be different. So just see what is um, an ideal timeout time for you. Now, enable TCP reset. I'm going to enable this feature. What this is going to do is if a TCP connection gets disconnected for whatever reason, this is going to almost immediately disconnect that um, connection so the reconnection can be made as soon as possible and be connected to another server in the backend pool. So I'm just going to leave it as turned on. Now floating IP is a concept um, that can be a little bit tricky if you need to um, this kind of stuff. Uh, it's basically uh, an IP that can be assigned to 
multiple resources in the back end. So by default, you have the, without enabling floating IP, as it stands by default, you have a public IP assigned to the front end of the Azure Load Balancer. But once you enable floating IP, that IP can be used or assigned um, with the same port to multiple resources in the back end, which helps with redundancy and some applications may require you to enable floating IP. Now, Microsoft does have um, a document explaining um, this. I will put that link in the YouTube description box below so you guys can read more about floating IP. Um, and decide if it's necessary for your environment or not. Uh, most likely that you won't need it, but if you're um, in an um, environment where resiliency and high availability is a topmost priority, you may need to enable floating IP. Now, outbound source network address translation, SNAT, I'm just going to leave this as it is. Uh, it's the recommended. So what this is going to do is it's going to uh, direct the outbound traffic from your backend pool virtual machines through the um, Azure Load Balancer as well. So let's click Save. Okay, and we go next. Uh, we don't need to put any specific rules in here for outbound rules, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. Next is tags. I don't need to have any tags. We're going to go ahead and create this uh, resource. Now it's going to run through its final validation. Once it confirms that we've put everything that we need in here, it's going to say validation pass. So let's go ahead and create this Azure public load balancer. Okay, now this deployment can take a few minutes. So I'm just going to pause this video. Once the deployment has been successfully um, completed, I will proceed with the tutorial. The deployment has been completed now. Let's go to the resource. And in here, under settings, you will see front end IP configuration. Over in the overview page, you will see a summary of what has been created as well. You will see multiple rules in here. If you've got multiple rules and you've got the back end pool, the help probe in here as well. Now, let me just click on the help probe quickly um, to show you how it looks like. So this is how the help probe uh, has been set up on port 80. And if I go refresh, and let me just go back. To insights, it should show the help probe in here. As you can see, you have two ticks, which means everything's good. So um, our configuration looks perfect. So let me just go back to a new tab. I'm going to find out what the public IP address is of the front end of our Azure Load Balancer. This is the IP. Okay, let me just copy that and I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to paste the IP and hit enter. Voila! As you can see, the load balancer has done its job and the HTTP traffic has been directed to our web server one in this instance. Now, if I was to try this from a different computer, it would um, direct the traffic to web server 2. Okay guys, I think I'm going to end the video in here. That's it for this tutorial. If you guys have got any questions, please feel free to put a comment below. I'll put all the Microsoft documentation in the YouTube description. If you learned something new from this tutorial, please help our channel by subscribing and sharing this with your friends and colleagues. Don't forget to hit like and I will catch you guys in the next one. Until then, take care and have a good day.